let us pray let us sit down and pray gracious heavenly father we thank you for this evening we thank you for this hour in which we are going help us to understand our responsibilities towards those who who live with disabilities help us to accompany them and help them to make feel dignified in their lives we ask this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ several years ago we were living in a parsonage near ambro and there used to be one very a very healthy person very handsomely built always going around in a shirt and a lungi which is folded up to his waist and he is a very neat worker but he is deaf and dumb the people around that area only know him as a dumb person but he is very skillful in gardening and whenever he is called to work he will make a very neat work of your garden he will clean it thoroughly and he will make it look speck and span if anyone's garden is neatly done in that area they will ask the owner of the house saying has the dumb fellow come and worked here no one knew his name and we had one helper woman coming to our house from that village where he hails from and through her we knew that he was called kanniyappan uh, in his native village and other day i several years ago i went to the directorate of public information to meet some official and i was as i was waiting on the corridor to be uh, called in i saw a blind person working on chairs like this uh, repairing the chairs um, making some intricate pattern on the repaired chairs even some intricate pattern even people with eyes may not be able uh, very good in doing after some time he just got up and slowly walked to the end of the corridor where the restrooms are during that time the office assistant was distributing tea inside the office and he brought a cup of tea to this person and as he was coming he just knocked down some files from one of uh, the tables around and someone shouted at him and then as he came out he just kicked his uh, legs against hit his legs uh, foot against some uh, wooden pieces that was there uh, kept for repairing and he cursed the person who was working there and asked me where is this blind person who was working here and i told him that he has gone to the restroom and he went in and then the person came without dashing against anything without bumping into anything this person without sight he came sat down and started doing his work and he was off with tea and he gracefully received his tea and uh, started working in these two incidents these two persons were identified only with their disabilities physical disabilities they were not identified by their names or even by the skill by the the, the skillful work that they are doing today the theme for this sunday is disability dignity in dependence today is a special sunday for the physically and mentally challenged people all over the church of south india in all the five states and in jaffna 
తెలంగాణ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ కర్ణాటక కేరళ తమిళనాడు అండ్ అక్రాస్ ద సీ జాఫ్నా ఆల్ ద సిఎస్ చర్చెస్ ఆర్ డివోటింగ్ అపాన్ దిస్ థీమ్ ట్రైంగ్ టు రిమైండ్ అవర్ సెల్స్ హౌ ఆర్ వీ ట్రీటింగ్ ద డిసేబుల్డ్ పర్సన్స్ హూ ఆర్ ఇన్ అవర్ మిట్స్ అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ అవర్ బిబ్లికల్ కాల్ అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ అవర్ క్రిస్టియన్ రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ టువర్డ్స్ పీపుల్ విత్ డిసబిలిటీ the world is seem to be constructed with able bodied mind persons in mind the world is constructed for able bodied persons we have steps everywhere no proper railings even churches are built upon uh, you know altar upon altar the lower altar upper altar with steps without mindful of uh, aged people or people with disabilities and their accessibility to uh, the altar there are churches now because of the constraint of space for parking the church is being taken to the first floor or second floor so people with disability always have to struggle for keeping pace with us people with disability always act, have to struggle with able bodied person for accessibility that is the world that we are living in slowly the concept of disabled accessibility is catching up in the secular world but the traditional minded church architecture is yet to change is yet to change sympathetically towards disabled persons even today high altars are being built even today uh, people with disability and aged are, are finding it extremely difficult to access the altars what does the bible tell us about physically and mentally challenged there are in the bible passages with terri- terrifying prospect for uh, disabled persons for example i i read one passage uh, in leviticus chapter 21 this comes in between uh, verses 16 to 21 god decrees that uh, no one with blemish shall draw near the altar for such a person with disability will be a profane to the sanctity of the altar that is in uh, Levit- leviticus uh, 21 16 to 24 and uh, coming from that leviticus 22 20 you shall not offer anything that has a blemish for it will not be acceptable in your behalf that is deduced from this stipulations are we to understand that persons with disability or differently able persons are never to come in the presence of god but there are also other references in the bible other verses with which we have to balance these verses and i read from psalms 146 verse 8 the lord opens the eyes of the blind the lord lifts up those who are bowed down and again when the lord jesus christ was inquired by john the baptist who was who has already been cast into prison by herod and he sends his disciples to ask jesus about his identity because he has been fervently waiting for the one who is to come and he is asking whether you are the one who is to come or do we have to wait for another and the lord tells him reports uh, ask the disciples to report back to john what i am doing my identity is what i do the ministry that i am involved in and the lord lists his ministry in matthew chapter 11 verse 5 the blind receive their sight the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear he go and tell john the baptist who am i and for whom for whom i am ministering then are we to understand that differently able people are only objects of cure and objects of miracle healing 
And then what about those who still struggle with disability? What about those children born with disability and still live with disability? What, do, what about those people across whose life the miracle of Jesus has not come across? What about those people who still struggle with their disability, whose life has not been crossed by our Lord Jesus Christ? There is another way to approach this reality of disability in our community and in our family. We find that when Job argues his case with his friends, Job was afflicted with a very painful disease, debilitating disease. And his friends comes, come and accuse him, uh, uh, just try to reason him that this is given by God, so accept this disease. Don't, don't just lament over it. It may be given by God for some false or sin that you are committed. And all through Job's book, Job has been defending himself saying, I have never committed a sin. I have been a righteous person. This would have come upon me because God allowed it. But don't say that I have done anything to deserve this sickness. And one of his argument is this, Job 29, verse 15. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. The disabled were not objects of cure. The disabled are objects or persons who deserve our companionship. They are objects of our companionship. Being eyes to those who are blind, legs to those who are lame, and arms to those who have no limbs. And there, is, there are also other Old Testament laws which warn the community against abuse of disabled persons. This also comes in Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 14, and I read, You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear God. I am the Lord. Because the deaf cannot hear, don't revile at him. Because the blind cannot see, don't put any st stumbling blocks. You shall fear, the go fear your God. God equates the fear of God with the treatment of the disabled people in your community, in your midst. The way that you treat the disabled people is the way that you fear God. And you, if you abuse disabled persons, don't act as if you are a pious person. You can never abuse a disabled person and be a pious Christian or a pious person. And at the end of the verse, God puts his signature, I am the Lord. Whenever there are a lot of laws in the Bible, whenever God gives a very important law that cannot be just brushed aside, or ignored, he puts his signature behind that verse and he says, you shall fear your God, I am your Lord. So treatment of uh, treating the persons with disability with care and concern is very important and it's at the, at the center of our Lord God's heart and it's very important uh, to your spirituality. Deuteronomy 27, 18 says, Cursed be anyone who misleads a blind person on the road. And what about Jesus Christ? In the kingdom of God that was promoted, inaugurated by Jesus Christ, Jesus sets the benchmark of hospitality the benchmark for your hospitality is when you invite the disabled person to your banquet, not to any private dinner. When you set a banquet, 
when you set up a public banquet jesus instructs in luke chapter 14 verse 13 when you give a banquet banquet means it's a public where you invite everyone invite the poor the crippled the lame and the blind it is norm in our community that these people are given only the leftovers that we do not know what to do these are all leftovers so i find uh, some poor people to just dump all these leftovers but our lord jesus christ said that, is, that does not happen in the kingdom of god in the kingdom of god that i inaugurate the poor the crippled the lame and the blind they are the primary invitees for the banquet and that is the kingdom of god in john 9 when disciples ask whether the blind person begging on the streets is begging because some because of some sin whether it is a sin of it, of his parents or his own sin our lord says he was born blind so that god's work might be revealed in him he was born blind john 93 so that god's mighty work may be revealed in him so as the son of god jesus exhibited god's work through a natural mir- miracle giving him an eyesight we are all not equipped with the miracle working power of jesus christ we cannot make any blind to see lame to walk any crippled person whole or mute person to speak what can we do job declares i will be eye to those who are blind i will be leg to those who are lame i will be arms and limbs to those who are disabled we had read today a beautiful old testament incident in the life of david found in second samuel chapter 9 david has recently become king and he has been for years hunted down by saul the previous king obviously a king wants his son to take over his throne even chief ministers today want their sons to take over the throne so what is wrong with a king dreaming about his son becoming his successor there is nothing wrong in Saul's expectation of Jonathan becoming a king but god had other plans he chose another last son of a shepherding family because God wanted the king of Israel to be a shepherd not a king. And of course David committed a sin by becoming a king later in his life abusing his powers and that led to his downfall. And David the king uh, uh, David the successors became very despotic kings. And uh, that is that is uh, the story of the Bible. But here he David comes as a fresh a fresh king. He has just been made king. and now he comes and uh, of course Saul and Jonathan had died uh, fighting the Philistines now he comes and asks whether there are anyone to whom he can show kindness because of his friend Jonathan because Saul's son Jonathan and David were soul mates and he wanted to show some kindness because Jonathan was so uh, understanding uh, kind to David and he was it was informed that there is one son of Jonathan who is lame in both his legs and he has been living in a, a, a servant's house and so David asks that person to be brought to him and this person uh, was brought to him Saul's grandson and immediately as he appears before David and pays obeisance the first reaction of David is to call him by his name that happens in chapter uh, chapter 9 verse 8 uh, uh, verse, verse 6 david said mephi boshe that's what he said he just called him by his name in the incidents that i narrated at the beginning of this sermon i told you how 
persons with disability are only identified by their disability. But here, David, being a king, refused to identify him with his disability of the person who is standing before him, but he called him with, by his name. That is a big assurance of his human dignity. He is a king standing with his uh, uh, followers. And there is also servants of Saul and Jonathan standing with Meshiboshet. And in front of everyone, the king addresses this person with his name. That restores his full personhood. And see what he, how he reacts. Mephibosheth in chapter 9 verse 8. Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 8. What is your sermon that you should look upon a de dead dog such as I? What is your sermon that you should look upon a dead dog such as I? Even a dog we cannot, uh, sometimes we just shoo it away. But a dead dog, we don't like to see it. We want that to be removed from the place. That is polluting the place. We call some, we don't do it ourselves, we call someone to remove it. And he says, I am in such a state and you have called me by, by my name and assured me of my human dignity. And secondly, David restores all the estates of his grandfather to Mephibosheth. He told uh, the servants of David that they, probably all the slaves of David, uh, Saul uh, were enjoying the properties uh, of uh, Saul. Uh, but he told them, here is uh, here to inherit the property. So don't deceive him because of his disability. So make sure that the lands of Saul is tilled and all the produce are brought to his table. And Mephibosheth was, give, was given uh, a life sustenance for a respectable life. That is the second most important point. A person with disability ought to be assured of the human dignity. And if we can do anything, we can see that sustenance for life is assured for a dignified life in a community. And uh, David orders Seba, who has 15 sons and 20 slaves. And of course, there must have been a large household to be at service of Mephibosheth to till the land and bring the produce to Mephibosheth's table. And thirdly, David declares that Mephibosheth will forever eat at my table. He will sit at my table. He may be a lame person. He may be a grandson of my enemy. Nevertheless, he is a prince. And his dignity has to be ensured. And he said, from henceforth, he will sit in my table and eat along with me. Like a prince, he will be treated. Yet any disabled person must be given his due worth of human dignity. And fourthly, Mephibosheth was living with one slave called Machir in a faraway place uh, called uh, Lo Dibat. And now he is being brought to Jerusalem from the periphery. From the periphery, this disabled person is brought to the center. This is the reality of any disabled person. Any disabled persons in any community, even in the church, they always vanish into the periphery. Disabled persons are so much struck with a complex, uh, complex feeling about their disability that they don't claim their rightful place in the midst of the community. Left to them, they will be comfortably vanishing into the periphery of our community. You can never see them. They don't claim. They don't come and claim the space here. They don't come to claim the rights here. And worst of all, they won't even come to claim the pastor's attention. In my long years of service, 
I never seen any disabled person claiming the pastor's time and pastoral ministry for himself. And they always feel the pastor is overburdened by uh, able-bodied persons, uh, whatever it is. And so they don't want to trouble the pastor. And this is the reality of any disabled persons in any community. They are always on the periphery. And those who are on the periphery have to be brought to the center. The restoration of Mephibosheth is complete with this. But his ordeals are not complete. Any disabled persons are always vulnerable. And so even when David restores his life to such an extent, but he was yet vulnerable to be accused. See, when something happens, of course, um, uh, David was abusing his power. He was abusing uh, Bathsheba, uh, the wife of the Hittite, and then uh, the downfall of David's household starts. Absalom rebels against him, and David ha ha had to leave Jerusalem uh, as a, a refuge. Uh, he had to leave Jerusalem because of the revolt of Absalom, and all those who were loyal to David just followed him across the stream. And Mephibosheth was not able to follow him because he was a disabled person. And David took it, uh, 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 took it against him. Why Mephibosheth? Why he did not come uh, to follow me? And, be, uh, David, and he had to explain himself in chapter 19. My uh, slave, Siba, he left me when he followed you. He left me here even though I wanted to come with you. He considered that I'm a burden. So he left me back and that is why I couldn't follow you. And then the same David takes the 50% of the estates of Mephibosheth and gives it to Siba. And that's how the story ends. The disabled persons are always vulnerable for this kind of accus ac uh, uh, accusation. And that is why they always go and uh, uh, hide themselves in the periphery. I think we are only talking about the physical disabilities so far. But disabilities are of different types. Today we are challenged, uh, today we are asked to um, think about not only physical disability but also mental disabilities. There are other disabilities uh, called cognitive disability. People uh, are, who are struggle to understand, uh, uh, to receive um, uh, the, uh, proper understanding. Sensory um, disability, emotional disability, altogether it may be, uh, comp there may be complication and combination of all this disability which may be called as developmental disability and per person, there are different kind of disabilities with which persons are um, afflicted. Yeah, an able-bodied person is not a person without any disability that we should understand. We live with a lot of disabilities that we don't realize. Jesus is talking about many disabilities in the Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 5, Jesus is talking about the disability of an uncontrolled tongue. When you become angry, you call your brother or sister, you fool. So uncontrolled tongue is a disability with which many of us are living and we don't realize that. And you so swear by God for trivial things. You take up God's name. That is a disability. Jesus also talks about the dis disability of uncontrolled anger which demands eye for an eye, tooth, truth, uh, tooth for a tooth. People with this disability we can see around. We don't call them disabled persons. Disability of uncontrolled anger even demands the divorce of a wife for a trivial reasons. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus deals with all these disabilities and warns us against that. Disability of uncontrolled eye which sees other women with lust. These are all 
disabilities that are there in able-bodied persons. Jesus himself chose a bunch of disciples with disabilities. Can be called cognitive disabilities. Often, all the four Gospels keep telling us that Jesus said something and the disciples were unable to understand. And they were even ask, uh, afraid to ask Jesus to explain to them what he talked about. Often, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John uh, inform us that disciples were not up to Jesus' level to understand uh, whatever he was talking. But Jesus did not desert them. He kept them with him. He lived with them. He taught them. He made them see so many of his miracles, made them to hear his sermons and parables. He taught them publicly, he taught them privately. He even encouraged them to participate in the miracles that he did. Asked them to bring food for the 5,000 people or 4,000 people and then sent them two, uh, two by two to the villages where he was going to go. So Jesus persisted with persons with dis disability. He did not um, desert them. Another important realization that we are called to realize today is that our abilities are not permanent. Though we may, we may be able-bodied when you are born, we may, well, though we may be jumping and running around when uh, we are in youth, our abilities debilitate as we advance by age. Once I used to chase the Pallavan transport buses and get into it. Nowadays, when the bus just moves, I don't have any um, confidence in uh, running after it. I used to run behind the electric train to get into it when I was going to college. Nowadays, I don't take that risk. So our ability debilitates as we advance in ages. Anyone's ability is not permanent. Our ability is always temporary. The COVID lockdown situation made us to realize that a small virus can turn the world upside down. Many able-bodied persons died. And thankfully, many sick persons also, uh, sick persons survived the COVID um, attack. But all those who, who underwent treatment for COVID, they have, they have some disabilities. They are living with some disabilities. Their disabilities has been reduced. They have some kind of illness just lagging behind in them. A sickness, an accident may cripple you, may make your disability to go away. So our ability is not a permanent one. So whenever we wake up in the morning, let us be thankful to God that we are still able. Let us be thankful to God for the ability that he has given so far and be mindful of being eye to those who don't have eyes, being legs to those who don't have limbs, being arms to those who don't have hands, mouth to those who, don't, who cannot speak, and ears to those who cannot hear. Disabled persons are not objects of our charity. The last thing a disabled person would want is to be treated with sympathy. Disabled person doesn't need our sympathies, but they have to be treated with dignified priorities. Give them the human dignity. Disabled persons do not need our sympathies, but our accompaniment. Let us always be conscious and sensible that we don't leave behind any of them. And let us carry all these people along with them to stand before God 
and make this world a kingdom of God. So help us God.